Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. This is a requested video, so let's do it. Uh, I do have the question here on my phone. Uh, the only reason I do this is I don't want to write down all of the details immediately. Um, I'm going to read the question as I go because I, I want you to see where these things come from. Okay, so I have just a little bit written down. I have two random variables. Uh, they basically explicitly give me this information, right? They tell me that um, the size, we're interested in something about the size uh, of a family that visits a theme park, and they give me some little M, so that's why I've labeled it capital M. So capital M is uh, the size of the family that visits a theme park, uh, and then they tell me something about, well, given a family of size M, I also have uh, something about the number of family members that ride a roller coaster. So who the hell wants to go to a theme park and not ride a roller coaster? I don't know. Anyways, all right, we're interested in uh, the probability uh, that there are six family members given that N is five. Now let me read this question to you real quick. Uh, it says, the last part says, calculate the probability that the family, that a family visiting the park has exactly six members, has exactly six members given that exactly five uh, ride the roller coaster. So hopefully that's clear to you. This is what we're looking for here. Uh, and um, let me write down what else they give me. They also give me uh, the probability mass function for my random variable M. M is a discrete random variable, of course. And they tell me that M well, the probability that m is equal to little m is equal to 8 minus little m divided by 28. Uh, and this is where m, little m, is equal to 1, 2, up to 7. So, that's all well and good. And now, uh, the other important information is regarding n. Now, they also say... Uh, they also say here that uh, for a family size M, uh, the number of members that ride a roller coaster follows a discrete uniform distribution. Now let me just mention something about that. So hopefully you're thinking they give me actually a conditional, um, a conditional distribution. They tell me actually explicitly right there that uh, N given M is distributed uniform. So it's discrete uh, on the set um, 1 up to M. A couple of things I want to mention about this. Uh, first of all, if you're looking for a conditional probability, most likely you're going to have to use Bayes' theorem or possibly low, law of total probability, uh, somewhere along those lines. Um, uh, also, uh, what I wanted to say, um, well, yeah, because of that, uh, because of that, you should be thinking, I need some other conditional distribution, and also, you also need these variables to be flipped. So notice, I mean, think about what Bayes' theorem says. These two variables need to be flipped in order to use Bayes' theorem, right? So this is distributed uniform, n given m. And another thing I should think you should think to yourself is that, uh, of course, um, it has to be less than or equal to m, because I mean, how are you going to have uh, family members riding a roller coaster? I mean, there cannot be more than the number of people in the family. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, let me write down the given mass function for a discrete uniform. This is absolutely one of the distributions you need to know. So what is it? Um, this again, this is a conditional mass function, so probability n given m n given m is equal to the discrete uniform is simply one over the number of members in your set. So one over m. Remember how you count something like this. This is m minus the one before you started with. M minus zero is m. So there's m things there. Wonderful. All right, well done. We have these two things. So we have this mass function and we have this mass function. I mean, this is perfectly perfect setup to use Bayes' theorem. Uh, I do think that the wording of this problem sucks. 
So you have to sort of spend some time thinking about how to set up around random variables, things like that. All right, we're ready. We're ready actually to do this. So um, let me write down the formulation of base term we want to use here. Okay. Um, so let me give myself some more room. Let's get rid of this. All right, we know this. So now, um, now some people may have trouble remembering um, Bayes' theorem, uh, but the way that it works basically, let me just start writing it down and I'll tell you how I remember it. So first of all, I need to, the numerator, need to flip these two. So this is equal to, using Bayes' theorem, the probability uh, that n equals five given m equals six and now I need to multiply by the probability of whatever is in here. So probability m equals 6. Okay, now I need to divide. And this is where people often get confused, especially for this problem. So the first thing in the denominator on the left-hand side is always the exact same as the numerator. Always and forever. So this is, again, let's rewrite this. Sometimes, I'll, honestly, in the test, I'll just put tick marks. Just repeat this. Whatever this is. Just think to myself, whatever this is goes right here. Right? Because I want to write it again. But I'll write it for you. I'm so generous. This is probability uh, n equals 5 given m equals 6, probability m equals 6. Now, what else do I need in the denominator is I need the everything that's the complement of this. I need the complement of m equals 6. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I said this is kind of tricky is for this problem, uh, for this problem, it's a little bit tricky what to encompass. Just think about this logically, though. Okay, I'm going to write this again. Let's give myself some more room. So probability um, n equals 5 given m equals 6. Probability m equals 6. So what is what else can happen besides there being six members in the family? Now, remember, we want to know, um, we're given that there are five members riding the roller coaster. If there are five people, five members in the family riding the roller coaster, there cannot be less than five members in the family, right? So what else can happen? Well, we could have all five, all five, we're given that five riding the roller coaster. We could, we could be having that all five of them, actually, there are only five members and they're all five riding the roller coaster. So in other words, we could have the probability uh, that n equals five given m equals five, right? There are five members in my family. All of them ride the roller coaster uh, times probability uh, n equals five. Again, let me reiterate, I I'm finding the complement. I need the complement of m equals six. It cannot be four. m cannot be four. It cannot be less than four. It cannot be less than five because I mean five people ride the roller coaster. So hopefully this makes sense. I don't want to sound like a broken record. All right. Now, plus, what else could M be? Well, M could be 7. Um, I erased it, but M, the largest M could be actually is 7. So that's what we could have. So we could have probability of N equals 5 given M equals 7. Probability M equals 7. Man, I barely put that in. I hope you can see it. I hope you can see it. Uh, this is m probability n is 5 given m is 7 times probability n is 7. So here I've applied Bayes' theorem. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I just need to plug these things in. It's actually not too bad. Uh, we're given the conditional distribution. It's discrete and it's uniform. So this one right here um, is just one six. Go back to what I wrote down uh, regarding the conditional distribution. So this is uh, one over six. Maybe I'll write it down again uh, for you right here. So we had that the probability that m uh, equals little m given m equals m was given to be one over m. All right, so. That takes care of it, right? Because m is 6, so I just replace it right here. I mean, it's straightforward, I think. Times, what's the probability m is 6? Well, we're given the mass function uh, for m. Little m here is just 
eight minus m over 28. And remember uh, that little m is going from one to seven. So I have my two mass functions here and I'll utilize them. So this is uh, probability m is six. And looking over here, um, yeah, it looks like two over 28. All right, that's all well and good. Now I'll just repeat it, right? And these two expressions are exactly the same. So this is one six uh, times two over 28. Uh, and now what do I have? Uh, well, uh, probability n is five given m is five. So I'm not too much going on. I mean, look at my expression over here. Look at my mass function, my conditional mass function. Just replace m with five. Done, so one over five. Uh, now probability m is five. All right, so look over here. This is three over 28, all right? Yeah, and then uh, plus uh, probability n is five given m is seven. So one over seven. And when I plug in seven here, it looks like one over 28. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a cleanup here. I can get rid of the 28s. There's a 28 in the denominator of all of these expressions. So it looks to me like I have the following. And I mean, this is really just calculator work. I'll write one more step. Uh, two over six, this is one third, uh, divided by uh, one third plus three fifths plus one seventh. And that's all in the denominator here. And this is um, approximately what? This is approximately 0 0.3. Zero nine seven. All right, so that takes care of it. I hope this was helpful. Um, tell me your thoughts about the question, and thank you for subscribing.